right, guys. So I want to give you the latest in the trial of Thomas Cashman, who is in court at the moment accused of the murder of nine-year-old Olivia Pratt Corbell from Dovecot near Liverpool. She was shot in her own home on August 22nd of last year. So yesterday continued Thomas Cashman's cross-examination. The court started late yesterday because of an issue with a door or something. So it was around midday before the court proceedings actually started. So in my previous video on this case, I was reading you the cross-examination um, up to the end of day adjournment. So let's now continue. David McLaughlin, QC, prosecuting, resumes his cross-examination of the defendant. He asks Cashman about the day before the shooting. The defendant agrees he saw Joseph Nee outside his mum's house on August 21st, the day before the murder, and his van was parked outside. He agrees to the suggestion he went past Finch Lane several times while Nee's van was there on August 22nd. Cashman, speaking about the day of the murder, says, I did not see it. I weren't paying attention to Mr. Nee's van. Asked about being seen at the corner of Finch Lane and Berryford, he says, I remember going on the Berryford corner. With your hood up and your eyes only showing? Pissing down with rain, yes. That's how the lads wear their gear around Dovecot. If it's raining, yes. Cashman is asked about a trip from Snowberry Road to Mab Lane on the afternoon of August 22nd. He says, I'm 99% sure I didn't get into the Ford Transit Connect. I still am that I walked from Craig's to my sister's down Princess Drive. Cashman has played footage of himself walking along Princess Drive and the van driving down the road. He agrees that he is seen walking into Snowberry Road and that said vehicle is captured arriving a short time later. It then turns left onto Yew Tree Road. Mr McLaughlin says, It turns left onto Yew Tree Road. And then Thomas Cashman says, I was 99% sure I walked from Nicky's to my sister's. I was never 100. In my mind, I thought I walked from Nicky's to my sister's. Mr McLaughlin asks him to keep watching. He's asked whether he's seen continuing his journey on foot. Have you seen anyone walking yet, Mr Cashman? No, I have not. CCTV then shows him on foot on Mab Lane. Did you get into the van? If I did or didn't, I was only going in the same direction as I was going to my sister's anyway. Do you remember getting into a stinky van? No, I cannot. Later on, you told you remember getting into a stinky van. That was five hours later after this. Is this an attempt by you to try to avoid saying you were in the van? No, because you said that I was in the van. But in my mind, I thought I walked. That's why I said. Can you play it, please? That's what I thought, that I walked. I never walked, obviously. I thought I did. It must have been correct. I'm in the passenger seat of this van. Your 99% was wrong on this occasion. It was, yeah. Cashman was then at home for one hour and 20 minutes, having something to eat. He was then seen coming up Finch Road from the direction of East Prescott Road. Mr McLaughlin shows him the view, which he would have had to his left, which shows Timmy Naylor's house on Finch Lane. If you was to look, yeah. Did you look? No, I didn't look. I wasn't interested. I was just driving around my own area. Cashman then visited his mother's house on Finch Lane. Was your brother there? No, my brother was not there. No, I'm sure about it. Was that to speak to the lads and do some drug dealing business? I spoke to the lads, yeah. Cashman says he did not have drugs on him at the time. Did you say, sorry lads, couldn't give you the gear before, so my brother was here? I just went in and explained it was in Nicky's. Cashman says there was two lads, but will not name them. After a question from Mr McLaughlin, Cashman confirms he knows Mr Naylor and knows where he lives. 
Were you thinking about who was going to Timmy's that day? No, I wasn't. Of Joseph Nee, Cashman says, He's never at Naylor's house. He's never watched the football at his house before. I'd never know he was at Timmy Naylor's house. I wasn't paying attention. The court is shown further CCTV from Dovecot Labour Club. Cashman says he is unsure what he's doing. But he was drug dealing, collecting money or socialising. He says, I would have had a spliff if I was socialising. I didn't look at Timmy Naylor's address. I might have gone past, but that was the route I'd take every single day. Timmy Naylor just happens to live on that road. Mr McLaughlin asks whether he was aware of the football match that night, Man United v Liverpool. Cashman says he does not follow football. Did the streets look quiet? I'm not sure. I don't remember what the streets were like. I can't remember. I weren't paying attention to how busy it was. Cashman is shown CCTV of Nee's van arriving at Flinch Lane shortly before the match. He is asked whether he knew the vehicle was there. I wasn't looking for Joseph Nee. I wasn't thinking about Joseph Nee once that day. Mr McLaughlin asks about his knowledge of the area. It's where I've been brought up all my life. You know it like the back of your hand. I know the roads. I've lived there all my life. Why is it at seven minutes past eight at night you are driving past Timmy Naylor's address? I don't know why. I'm going towards Fincham Road. You have to go past his house to get there. I've got friends on Fincham Road. Did you see Joseph Nee's van? No, I didn't. I didn't pay attention to Joey Nee's van. Cashman is shown CCTV footage of him in the area of Snowberry Road about 8.15pm. What are you up to, Mr Cashman? I've just been to my mate's house in Snowberry Road because I spoke to him to arrange to pick some money up. Who? Craig. Craig Byrne. What's his nickname? He hasn't got a nickname. His name's Craig. I've always called him Craig. Cashman says he also has a mate on Fincham. Who's your mate? It's my mate Danny. Danny from Fincham. What's his second name? I don't know. Is Danny just a mate or a drug dealing mate? He's just a mate. I don't want to say his name. I've told you his name. His name's Danny. I'm not saying no names. Danny's not a drug dealer. Danny's not a drug dealer, no. He works for tarmacking. Do you know his name? Yeah, I know his name. He's not going to get into trouble for this, is he? So tell us his name. No, I'm not giving no names. Mr McLaughlin moves on to Cashman's mobile phone. He asks, how long have you been out of action with a phone? A couple of days. Cashman is asked whether not having a phone inconvenienced him in his drug dealing. It does sometimes. What I do is give somebody a lump. I give them a week and go around and collect money off them. I'll always give them more then. Was that on your to-do list? I would have got a phone, yeah, of course. I don't have phones for long anyway. Once I've had it a bit, I'll lash it. I grafted on it. Is it difficult to buy one? No, I used to go to the phone shop. Why didn't you get one? I was using my missus's phone to phone who I needed to phone. I would never buy a phone from a supermarket. I buy a phone off the Asian shop. I know they're not open on a Sunday. I'm not sure if they're open on a Saturday. Mr McLaughlin suggests there's a large supermarket nearby. It's a big Tesco, yeah. You wouldn't go there for a phone. I'd use Dovecot Phone Shop because they sold cheap iPhones. I'd lash it after a couple of weeks. Cashman is asked about the phone he brought from Tesco in Berska the days after the shooting. He says, if I'm in Berska and I went to Tesco, that's what I've done. At that time, I've done nothing like that. My mate got kicked out by his girlfriend and went off on a boat. I wasn't grafting on that phone. Cashman says he made arrangements to meet with Mr Byrne on Aspies Road. Mr McLaughlin suggests lots of Sweeney's live on Aspies Road. They do live there. Why would you meet there? It's a common thing for me to do. I could never meet them outside my girlfriend's mum and dad. I'd meet them on the corner. Do they know what you do? They might have suspicions, but they've never said to me, are you a drug dealer? 
You're a big time drug dealer. I sold cannabis to a high level. I've never sold class A drugs, only class B drugs. I don't agree with selling class A. But if someone does it, I don't mind. I don't judge them by it. You're making £150,000 to a quarter of a million a year. I was earning three to 5000 a week, yeah. Mr McLaughlin asks about Cashman visiting his sister's house. She went mad at me. Well, she didn't go mad, but she said, I'm having problems with my boyfriend. You need to stop having people round. Mr McLaughlin asked Cashman whether he visited his girlfriend's brothers to drop off money for the flowers. I give it him after it. I said, meet at the top for nine o'clock. I didn't want him to get there and I not be there. Why is it at 90 minutes past eight you're driving down Finch Lane? I don't know the exact, every reason I went here and there. I don't know. From there I went home. I went home for a reason. I don't know why. If you want to go home, which way do you turn? I'd go right. Why is it at that time you're going on to Rothbury? I couldn't tell you. Cashman is asked whether he was looking up the road for a big white van. I wasn't looking up the road for no big white van and just driving around my local area where I've been brought up. If you want to go home, you'd take a right. I can't tell you where I was going to. Mr McLaughlin asks, you stayed at home for eight minutes. Why only eight minutes? I couldn't tell you why. Why are you going out at half past eight at night? I couldn't tell you why. I just went out. It was still light out. Were you starting to get excited? No, I was not starting to get excited. Starting to get into the murder frame of mind. No, I wasn't getting to no f- murder frame of mind whatsoever. Mr McLaughlin continues. Tell the jury where you're going. I went up Finch Lane. Then I've took a route and I've gone on to King's Heath. Did you look to your right? I did not look to my right, no. You didn't see a van? No, I didn't look. He is asked why he turned onto Rushcombe Road. I was obviously going to a friend's house. I've got a friend who lives on Rushcombe Road. The lad on Rushcombe, is he a drug dealer? No, he's not. Cashman says his friend's name is Lenny. He adds, I'm not saying his second name. Did you stop on Rushcombe Road? I can't remember. It doesn't look like I did, no. Have you any mates on King Heath Avenue? I have. It's about half a mile long. You'll see an interaction with two women. You stopped and had a little chat. To me mate's mum and me mate's sister, yeah. He is pictured at the junction of Finch Lane and King's Heath Avenue at this time. I stopped to speak to them to see how they are. You're asking, was I excited or in a murder frame of mind? I'm here stopping to talk to me mate's mum and sister and asking them how they are. I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing. Not scoping anyone out. You weren't looking for a big white van. I wasn't, no. Cashman then goes to his sisters on Mab Lane. Is that you checking where Joseph Nee was? He was my friend. Why would I want to look for my friend? Someone I was with the day before. Scoping him out the day before. I'm not scoping him whatsoever. I was with him at his mum's house. You're not at their mum's house having a laugh and a joke. Spirits were high. Everyone's laughing and joking. There was no falling out. Cashman says he spoke to Jamie about his brand new RS6 about his, or, and about his own van. Normally, I'm in a high performance car. It's a van I'm grafting in. It's only a half graft van. I get about socialising in it. You don't put gear in the van, just pick up money. Yeah. Mr McLaughlin turns to events shortly before 9pm. Summer night, but it's starting to get a bit dark. It's getting dark in the street, yeah. Cashman says he's parked on the corner on Aspies Road and that he would meet with Mr Byrne on the same corner. He comes from U Tree Lane when I got into the van with him. Did you get out of the van? Yeah. Did you stand on the corner? I would have been, yeah. Did you see anyone? We, I weren't paying attention to what was going on around me. Were the streets quiet? I can't remember. It was a long time ago. It's not a busy place anyway. 
Did you notice another lad coming across the road on the same side of the pavement as you at about nine o'clock? No, I did not. I weren't paying attention. It's you, isn't it? It's not me. 100% not me. The dark trekkie bottoms on, white sole trainers. On my clothing, I had a reflector what's distinctive, like blatantly. This person here hasn't got that because it's not me. There's nothing there on the pocket, is there? There's nothing on the back, is there? That's the Monterrain tracksuit top. You don't know where that is. You don't know where the tracksuit bottoms are. If I've got rid of them, they wouldn't be there for two days later in Roncorn going shopping with my girlfriend. Are you sure it's not you? I'm telling the genuine truth, it's not me. It's not me, I'm on Aspie's Road corner. Mr McLaughlin asks where the person came from and Cashman says, that's not for me to comment, it was not me. I know it's a short distance away. It's not the only direction this person could have come from. I didn't see him. I could have come from Yew Tree Lane. I wasn't looking round to, for who's walking round the streets. I weren't paying attention. Cashman says, you're trying to make the jury believe what you think is true. The truth is here. There's a problem here. You know what it is. He refers to a three and a half minute period between CCTV frames. There's nothing wrong with it. I've got in the van. The van stunk. We pulled in the cemetery to the massive bins. Craig threw the bin bags into the back of the cemetery. We went from there straight to Craig's house. I've always said it. Mr McLaughlin reads from Cashman's defence statement. During the day, the defendant spoke to Craig Byrne about collecting money owed for drugs. They agreed to meet at the corner of Aspies Road at 9pm to get the money. Mr McLaughlin says he told the jury about the trip to the cemetery yesterday and asks if he is happy to stick to that. I'm going to stick on that, yeah. Mr McLaughlin reads, He left his sister's house and drove to meet Craig Byrne. Mr Berg arrived a little late, but had already collected the money cashman agrees help us with this mr mclaughlin reads he was in a different van and the defendant got into the van they drove along finch lane turned left onto rothbury and went to the home address cashman says i know what you're trying to get at i've not put every last thing i was doing throughout this in the defense statement i haven't put i went from there i went from there i just give the bits of what was relevant there's bits in there. As you know, it's only two pages. It's not everything I've done throughout the day. I don't think it was relevant to say we stopped at the cemetery to get rid of a couple of bins. That's the reason it's not there. I didn't put every last thing in my defence statement. Was that relevant? No, to stop off and get rid of some rubbish, it's not. How long did it take to get rid of the rubbish? I didn't get rid of the rubbish. Craig got rid of it. Craig jumped out. I wasn't going near it. He jumped back in the van and we got off. A couple of minutes. Not sure how many bags. Were you meeting him to pick up anything else from the cemetery? Definitely not. Why? Did you forget? There's loads of things in that statement I did not put in. Have you been caught out there, Mr Cashman? How have I been caught out? Cashman is shown CCTV of Paul Russell taking the same journey later on in 22 seconds. Obviously, he's not gone to the cemetery to get rid of the rubbish. Neither of you. I haven't put everything in my defence statement. Cashman is again shown the figure on CCTV shortly before the shooting. He agrees with Mr McLaughlin. The man has his hands in his pockets. Is that you? No, it's not me. So case breaks for lunch and then they resume. Mr McLaughlin continues his cross-examination of Thomas Cashman. He returns to the figure seen on CCTV. You say that's not you? No, not me, no. You say you're in that van? Yes, I'm in the van, yes. The prosecution disagree? Yes. We see an image of the male walking further along the road. Is that you? No, it's not me. Did you see any other lads about at that time? 
It's about 20 past nine at night. There could be, yeah. Even though there's football on. Yeah, it's 20 past nine, yeah. Do all the lads wear Monterey and trackies? Everyone wears what's out at the time, yes. I'm not going to say every single person, but a lot of people wear same clothing. They were Nike Haranchis. Not specific to you, that stuff. No, a lot of people wear it, yeah. Mr McLaughlin moves on to Cashman's account of counting money with Craig Byrne at the time of the murder. How did you count the money? Did you have a little machine? We don't have no machine, no. We go upstairs and count the money with our hands. Do you put it into stacks of thousands? They go into packs of thousands, yeah. We were upstairs 15, 20 minutes, something like that. After we'd done that, I went downstairs. I was smoking my spliff in the back garden. From there, I went into the front garden. He's got a caravan to the left of his garden and little fishing chairs and a wall with a fence on and grass. It's somewhere I'd always be at the front or the back. When you got interviewed about the murder of the child, was that a dreadful thing for you? Yes, it was. Did you think at the time I wasn't even there? Yes, I was. I got advice to go no comment. I listened to him. I put a statement in just to clarify it wasn't me. I've got no involvement. It's nothing whatsoever to do with me. That's what I got advised off my legal team. I listened to my legal team. You were with somebody else, Mr Byrne. Did it annoy you that you couldn't say? It was something I got advice to do. I got advice to go no comment without putting a prepared statement in. I can't just go in there and say no comment. I need to go in and tell them it wasn't me. I've got no problem with these people. Cashman is shown the CCTV footage of the gunman. Mr McLaughlin asks, do you know who that man is? No, I do not. Is it Thomas Cashman? No, that man is not Thomas Cashman, with a pair of Monterey trackies. Everyone wears those types of clothes in the area. It doesn't mean it's me that did it. It's a common thing. I live in Heighton, Liverpool. Dovecot. Dovecot, Heighton, yeah. Mr McLaughlin plays the footage of the gunman running away. Is that you? No, it's not me. He's shown CCTV of a man running up the road. He has been on many times that day. It's a road where I live, Finchy, Heighton Ways, Dovecot. Mr McLaughlin plays footage of Cashman walking along earlier that day to the corner of Berryford Road. He is asked about whether it has been raining on that journey. Is it torrential? It was pissing down, yeah. Still raining on Mab Lane. The rain stopped, it stopped raining. You'll see it was torrential rain. It was pissing down. The rain stopped. He's shown CCTV of himself walking to Berryford Road with his hood up. As you can see there, the rain's heavy, torrential pissing down. The CCTV shows a woman getting out of a car wearing flip-flops. She's braving it. There, there's you in the torrential rain. In the torrential rain, you can see how bad it is. He points to a puddle. The CCTV goes back to Mab Lane where Cashman's hood is down. It's not torrential. It's not. Mr McLaughlin points at a car using windscreen wipers. It might have been a little, but it wasn't pissing down. Everybody can see the rain stop compared to what it was. It was pissing down and now it's not. It's basically not even raining. You could see it was soaking. It wasn't you had to hide your identity. No, it wasn't. No. It was something any normal person would do if it was raining bad. Mr McLaughlin plays some CCTV from the same corner later that evening after the shooting. That person there, if I say to you they got over the banks, would you know what that meant? Yes. What does that mean? You go over the back gardens. Do you do that sort of thing? No. That person has. That person has, yeah. Cashman says... They haven't come down Kingsheath. They've gone up one side bits onto Finch Lane through Berryford. That mail ends up on Princess Drive. On CCTV, every single road, Kingsheath is on CCTV. Finch Lane is on CCTV. Berryford Road is on CCTV. Princess Drive is on CCTV. 
The court is shown stills of this. Mr McLaughlin refers to the witness who cannot be named. Someone I was having a bit of fun with. She lives in, road name. Did it all go horribly wrong? No, I was in my mate Craig Burns' house. This person, this is not me. The witness says, it's Tommy. It's Tommy. Head in your hands. I've done Joey. A total lie. A blatant lie. A woman trying to stitch you up. It is. A woman scorned. It shows you the lengths a woman who's got something in for someone would go to. This is how low they go. This person you suggest as garden hot. It's not me. I'm in Snowberry Road. If I was to go from Craig Burns to her house, he gives the directions to the address. It's full of cameras that would have picked me up coming into her house. They would have been caught on CCTV. Nobody does. Cashman says many houses in the area have cameras to the front and back. Whereabouts am I going to her house? I never went to her house. The person who had done it. If he went to her house as well, this person would be getting caught on CCTV there. You should be playing it to the jury. Can you explain to the jury why you haven't? It's proof that nobody went to her house. I certainly have not gone to her house. Have you finished? I have finished, yeah. You seem to know a lot about CCTV. I've been looking at CCTV. I'm in prison for something I've not done. I'm looking at my papers. I've noticed there's cameras. I met my mate, Craig's. It's impossible for me to go to her house without getting caught on CCTV. Mr McLaughlin refers to phone records and says there's a call from the witness to her partner, Paul Russell. Were you aware of that call made? No, I was not aware. You're at Snowberry Road. I'm at Snowberry Road, the home address of Craig Byrne. He is later seen in Craig Russell's car. I seen him on Snowberry Road. I got a lift with him to Aspies Road. On the way round, I raised the issue of the money he owed me. You were just sitting off outside. I was sitting outside as I was outside. I flagged him down. I've gone to Aspies Road with him. Did you get into it in Witnesses Road? No, I did not. He asked if it regularly happened that he would flag someone down and get a lift. That will happen on numerous occasions. I'm in the garden and someone comes down, I'll flag them or they'll stop anywhere. I go with them in the car. Cashman says he's then dropped money for funeral flowers on Aspies Road. Mr McLaughlin asks if Craig Byrne could have given him a lift. He could have done. Paul Russell did. If he hadn't come down Snowbray, I wouldn't have got a lift with him. You got in the car. No, I did not. You've been taken back to your car. From Snowbury Road, I got in my road. I went to Scott Sweeney's and dropped off money for flowers. In the car with Paul Russell. Was it an okay chat? He owes me a lot of money. I said, what's going on? You're taking the piss. Say it as it is. What did you say? Where's my money? He said he's sorting it, trying to get it together. Did you threaten him? I said he needed to sort it out. He had five grand and some skunk. I said, pass it round to our mate, my mate Craig. You'll name Craig, is he a drug dealer? Craig's not a drug dealer, no, he's just a friend. He'll pick up money. It's drug money, yeah. He knows I sell cannabis, yeah. Is this your fitting a story to the evidence you know is about to come? No, I'm not. You know what happens to Paul Russell? You know where he goes after this. He went the shop. He dropped me off, then went the shop. That's where he was going before he seen me. The court is shown CCTV footage of Paul Russell at Moa Wines at the time. Do you recognise the top he's wearing? Yeah, he's wearing a top. He's not wearing the pants because I had the pants for weeks in my sister's. Otherwise, he would have been wearing the full suit. Mr McLaughlin shows him the Under Armour tracksuit top. When you're in the car, did you see that top? I weren't paying attention to this top. If he had the full tracksuit at his house, I would have been wearing the tracksuit bottoms with the jacket. I had them in my sister's house. They have been there for many weeks. You didn't get them on August 22nd? 
No, and I proved it. The CCTV proves I didn't go to her house. Mr McLaughlin says they will return to the clothing shortly. Cashman is seen on Snowberry Road shortly before 11pm. He says he was there 20 minutes, something like that. I was speaking to Craig, I was speaking to Colin, I walked over to Nicky's. Is that a house you own? I use it as a stash house. I went in and grabbed some cannabis. When you were there, did anyone turn up? No, I spoke to the lads, I spoke to Craig. Paul's going to drop some cash round for you now and a little bit of weed. Russell is seen on CCTV walking a dog with a bag in his hand. Mr McLaughlin says he was away for six minutes and was in the area around Snowberry Road. You didn't see him there, did you? No, I didn't because I went to Nicky's. He went to Craig's. Did Craig say to you, Paul Russell's here with some gear and money? No, I didn't see Craig after that. I got a lift off Paul McCarthy's to my sister's. He wasn't bringing a bag of clothes around, was he? No, he wasn't. It was nine ounces of skunk and money. Not clothes from a shooting. No, it wasn't. Two days later, I'm seen him run con with the clothes and trainers on. Cashman says he left with a bag of washing because the washer was broken at the flat. He says his trainers were left at the decks. The forensic DNA people have checked and everything on them trainers. They've checked for everything to do with Joseph Nee. They said someone kicked Joseph Nee and he was leaving a blood trail. They're my trainers, what I've had on, and the tracky bottoms. They've checked the trainers. There's nothing on them. The pants are somewhere. I haven't got rid of them. Two days later, I've got them on. Mr McLaughlin asks him why he wasn't dropped off at his own house by Paul McCarthy. I just never. I don't know who he was. I was cautious. I got him to drop me at my sister's instead of my house. Why didn't you walk? It's literally around the corner. Because I never. I got a lift with him. That's all I can say. Cashman says he gave Mr McCarthy directions. It would take a minute or two in a car, yeah? Was your head falling off? No, it was not. Because of what had happened earlier. My head's never fell off at all. I was in my mates. There's nothing for my head to fall off over. i done nothing wrong. Could you hear sirens in the distance? There was police everywhere, yeah. Cashman is then seen on a bike travelling towards his niece Bobby Bailey's home. He says she was standing in the window. I went into the flat and got a lift home. She's just come back from taking the dog for a walk. Mr McLaughlin asks, later on you say you stayed near her place. In the same block. I wasn't sure what number it is. It's my brother's mum. It's her boyfriend's flat. Do you have a name for them? Her name's Evie. The one who gave me the flat is Brian. Brian lives with Evie. I use the flat time to time. Sometimes put things in there. Sometimes I'll go around there and get my head down. Brian's had a flat there for years. And I asked him, can I rent the flat off you? He said no at first. Then I'm always arguing with my missus. I'm going to use it to get my head down there. You didn't have to pay him. I didn't have to pay him, no. Did you discover in the morning a little girl had been shot? When I woke up in the morning, yeah. I think in any area people would have been talking about it. Did you feel bad? Of course I did, yeah. I've got children myself. The same week a lad got killed in Liverpool called Sam Rimmer. Then a couple of days after that a girl got killed, Ashley Dale. A couple of days a little girl, Olivia Pratt Corbell, got killed. Yes, it was a bad week in Liverpool, yes. Mr McLaughlin plays some CCTV showing a van outside the home of a witness. It appears to pass and then reverse back towards the house. Why is it the day after the shooting you end up outside witness's home? Cashman says he was visiting a relative and saw Paul Russell. I seen him. I seen Craig and said he passed around 2,500 and scraps. I spoke to another mate, Little Red. Uh, for a couple of minutes and then I went round I saw Paul Russell in the garden I said to my mate stop reverse I said what the fuck are you doing taking the piss did it get more serious he was taking the piss I told him if he doesn't pay the money I'll take his graph phone and the car I'd take it what if he didn't give it to you if he didn't give it to me well he would have ended up getting a punch or something that's the world in which you live and work 
If I let people do that all the time, I wouldn't be able to sell cannabis. I would have took the graft. I would have took the car. He's got a nice car to pay the bill off. I'll use the term I'm sure you will understand. You can't let people rip you off. I can't let people take the piss. Mr McLaughlin asked about the trip to Runcorn and his girlfriend on August 24th. Did you need to get out of Dovecot? No, no, whatsoever. Was it getting heavy? No, no, whatsoever. He asked if he owns the flat. I rent it off my mate, Kevin. I'm not going to say his second name. Is he a criminal? Cashman says he could be. He says he paid Kevin 450 per month to rent the flat. He's asked if John Wynn lived there. John Wynn got kicked out by his missus. What happened on August 25th between 2pm and 4pm, Mr Cashman? I'm not sure what you're getting at. He's shown footage of his girlfriend's Land Rover travelling between Merseyside and Cheshire on this day. Can you remember what happened in your house, Grenadier Drive? I got rid of my CCTV recorder, yeah. Nicky McHale's house on Snowbury got raided for drugs. They went in there and took all my money, my skunk and cannabis. They arrested him for supplying. I found out and got a little worried with it being my stash house. I removed my recorder from my house. I don't know where it is. I took it out. I took it round to my mate's house. Now I don't know where it is. Cashman is asked who this was. He replied, just my mate, and refuses to name him. Mr McLaughlin says Cashman was arrested at the decks in Runcorn on September 4th. Mr McLaughlin asked Cashman to look at his prepared statement, which he gave to police during his interview. Mr McLaughlin reads through the questions asked to the defendant who responded with no comment. These topics included his whereabouts on August 22nd and his relationship with Joseph Nee. The officers ask if you can give us an alibi. We can check out, you say. No comment, because I've got advised by my legal team. I listened to my solicitor and went no comment. Were you wanting to speak? I wanted to, but I listened to my solicitor. Cashman was released before being arrested again for a second time at a flat in Liverpool City Centre. I got arrested because she told a load of blatant lies. I got arrested and charged for this. Mr McLaughlin says in the next police interview, the detectives put part of the witness statement to him, including telling Cashman she had reported waking up to find Tommy in my room with his hands in his hair. Cashman did not respond. You didn't say nothing to them. I didn't say nothing to them. I didn't want to speak to them. I just sat there and listened to the questions and gave them no answers. I got advised by my solicitor to go no comment. I just didn't say nothing, no. Was that your right? That was my right, yeah. My solicitor advised me not to. Mr McLaughlin shows Cashman a picture of an Under Armour t-shirt recovered from his sister's address. When did you take possession of this top? Weeks and weeks before this. It seized on September 5th, nine weeks and one day later. You didn't pick it up on August 22nd, did you? No, I did not. Do you know how it ends up in the pram box? I took them off at my sister's and went home. Would your sister store clothes in the pram box for you? I'm not sure. I don't recall a pram box. I left them there. With a blood stain on. The forensics said they found a bit of blood in the inside, yeah. I never said they're not Paul's. I got them off her after I slept with her. Mr McLaughlin now shows him the tracksuit bottoms recovered. Will you accept you've worn them? Yes, I've worn them, yeah. Do you know what they've got on them? Like my DNA, something else as well. GSR as well. Gunshot residue. Two particles. Any idea how two particles of GSR type 1 got onto these bottoms you were wearing? No, I don't. I can't say how they got there. It's not because you shot someone on King's Heath Avenue. No, the forensic woman said if somebody went to her house and they just let off a firearm and they took the clothes off and flung them in the kitchen, she'd expect a very high level of GSR to be around that area. There's nothing whatsoever in that area. There will be high level of GSR. They took swabs, everything, and there's nothing. Why did you leave those tracksuit bottoms? Because I just slept with her. We had sex in the kitchen. I had... 
all white all over my tracksuit bottoms and on my T-shirt. What was the white? The white was what's come off her, you'd call it semen. Has it come from you? No, from her. I was doing myself a spliff. I looked down and I had all white all over the top of my pants and the bottom of my T-shirt. Were you not upstairs with your boxes on? No, I was in the kitchen having sex. They were the clothes she gave me. Were they the clothes she gave you after a shooting went wrong? No, not whatsoever. I didn't go to her house that night. The CCTV proves nobody went to her house that night. Cashman says he cannot recall seeing the witness wearing the tracksuit bottoms. Did you ever ask for them back? No. Cashman is shown a series of CCTV stills of the gunman wearing dark clothing. He says, this is not me. Mr McLaughlin asks, are you the sort of person who uses people? No, I don't use people. I help people as much as I can. I'm not a bad person. I give someone my last thousand pounds. Did you use your sister? I used her house. I always look after my sister. Do you use your brother? No, my mates use his house to sell cannabis. He's not stupid. He told me to stop it. Because he was never there, I always did it. It's disrespectful. Did you use the witness? No, I did not use the witness. Did you ever deal drugs from your own home? No, I would never. You wouldn't do it on your own doorstep where your kids live? No. You've waited and waited, haven't you? Tried your best to fit the prosecution evidence to your story. No, I have not. That's what you've done. You haven't shown no proof. You've given theories to the jury. That's not true. That's just what you think. I understand that's your job. I respect that, but it's just not true. Mr McLaughlin asks, No, you tell the court that you were dealing drugs. Yeah, I was dealing drugs. I hold my hands up. I'm a drug dealer. I'm not a bad drug dealer who sells class A drugs. I don't do anything bad. I always grew up smoking cannabis. Some people may look at it as a very bad thing. I don't look at it as I'm a bad person for doing that. Did you ever drive that Citroen Berlingo van again? I left the van on the corner of Snowberry Road. There's police everywhere. I'm disqualified from driving. I don't have insurance. With police being everywhere, I didn't want to drive. The van did get drove again. It was getting used every day, just not by me. Cashman is played the CCTV footage of the moment Joseph Neat is shot on King's Heath Avenue. He looks down at the screen in front of him. Mr McLaughlin says, that's you, isn't it? No, it's not me. Joseph Nee even put in his statement. He is stopped by the judge. Justice Yip says he didn't ask a question about what someone else said. Mr McLaughlin continues, you're not prepared to own this because you killed a little girl. I did not kill a little girl. Is my DNA anywhere on the house on King's Eve Avenue? Could you tell the jury that, please? If my DNA was there, you'd tell the jury. Joseph Nees give a name in of the suspect who did it. Is this person's DNA on the door of the house? You can't answer that. You're not prepared to own this. Cheryl Carble walks out of the courtroom. A sharp break is called. Cashman is back on the witness box and Justice Yip calls the jury in. Mr McLaughlin has no further questions. John Cooper, QC, representing Cashman, says he has a few further questions in re-examination. It's been put to you you were garden hopping. It was put to you you were cut as a result of the escapade. You told the jury you were examined upon your arrest. When I got arrested, they said we'd like to take pictures of your body. I said, yeah, of course. Were there any injuries recorded on your body? None whatsoever, apart from on my knees. I had two carpet burns from when I was arrested. I had two burns off the police. They flung me about a bit when I was on the carpet, that was all. Cashman is shown the Under Armour t-shirt taken from my Blaine. Can you see any blood on it? No, it's just a hole. There's a small cutting out. Is that where the blood spot was? I don't know. The jury are shown the T-shirt. Did you garden hop, jump over the fences on the backs? No, I did not. Mr Cooper asks, were you asked on numerous occasions to name people, primarily people in your neighbourhood? You refused to do so. Are the police trusted? 
Cashman says, no, it's where I live. I live in Liverpool. I live in Heighton. Everywhere in Liverpool is the same. We don't trust police. Why didn't you give the names? Because I didn't want to. I didn't want my friends to go and get arrested. Is naming people to the police seen to be the done thing in your community? If you was to name somebody, you'd get called a grass, basically. Cashman is asked about the period in which he was without a form. Was your business affected over those few days? No, it was not. In terms of the trip to the cemetery, the prosecution suggests you just made that up. Is that right? No, I didn't make it up. I went into the cemetery and Craig threw the bin bags out into the big bins. The Crown suggests you made that up in the last few days. No, I didn't. Mr McLaughlin put to you comments asked by the police. Were you answering no comment to everything? Yes, everything. I gave a prepared statement. From then, I gave no comment. Mr Cooper cites further examples of other questions in which he answered no comment, including where he lived and whether he had a girlfriend. You were answering no comment to every single question. Yeah, I got advised to. There was no further questions for the defendant. And the court was then adjourned for the day. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I know this has been a long one. I've been Michelle. Hope you're well. I'll see you in the next video.